and welcome back. Now, let's talk about goal setting and planning because that's such a huge part of how we're going to have a successful season. You have to look at your schedule. For a lot of teams, the, ske- the, the season's going to be 10 weeks, period. And for other teams, it might be uh, 12 or 13 weeks based on postseason play and, and maybe longer. What you want to do, you want to get make a periodized schedule. Something that if you want to drop me an email I, and show me your schedule and maybe circle a few dates on there that are you know key competitions, then I'd be more than happy to assist you with doing a periodized schedule for training your team. In general, in 10 weeks, what can you accomplish if you only had 10 weeks or even 12 weeks? What can really happen? You know, I think one of the common mistakes is that we try to do everything. And then by trying to do everything, we end up actually kind of receiving mediocre results. One of the goals that I have for a 10-week season is that each player on the team, I will identify their strength and teach them how to operate out of their strength better so that they have one more nuance of strategy that they can use with their big forehand or their net game or their big serve or what have you or their ability to spin the ball. And then identify one weakness and shore that up. And if it needs to become a defensive shot that that never misses or always goes to a certain place, then so be it. But something where they know they're going to have increased confidence because they know that they're not going to be victimized regularly by having a glaring weakness that the other team can go to. You know, one of the great things about high school tennis is that there's coaching and the coaches are going to identify weaknesses and you want to you want to minimize those as much as possible. The other thing is I sell my team on something that maybe sounds kind of ludicrous, but to the high school mind, you know, it actually starts to make sense is that we can improve 100% during the season. And so I break it down this way. If we have a 10 week season and we improve 10% per week, then we can achieve 100% improvement. So we're going to improve our fitness by 2.5%. We're going to improve our understanding of tactics and strategy 2.5%. We're going to work on our mental game and we're going to become mentally stronger 2.5 percent and then finally we're going to work on our strokes and become 2.5 percent more efficient on our strokes and when you break it down that way then it seems incredibly doable when going about improving the team it's really amazing how much more a team can improve if you just focus on these things, this uh, one strength and one weakness for each player, improving everybody's fitness, and, and doing it in a way that's a little bit more intelligent. Because I, I used to kind of hurt my players when I, was, when I was training them. And so I've learned to go to the edge of what they can, what they can realistically do and not surpass that. But let's go back to periodizing because ultimately in 10 weeks about the most you can do is have three, three cycles of, of competitions. And I generally break down the season into four parts. We have the preseason, the first half of the regular season, the second half of the regular season, and the postseason. And generally, in the preseason, I'm so heavily training my players that we may actually experience some subpar performances and maybe a loss because conditioning them still through that entire phase, which is something I think a lot of coaches don't do. So, and then once we get to the first stage of the regular season, then we'll pick a date you know, we're looking for that team that is our rival, you know, the second place team that is th- poses a threat to us or the team that's ahead of us in the standings that we want to pass. Work it out so that we're going to be fresh. We're going to be our most fresh for those competitions. And there might be 
two, three, four of those during a season. Another thing that, that I do as I'm planning and is to give my players some rest as we're heading into the postseason. You know, kids, kids get tired. And um, I think a mistake that a lot of high school coaches make is that they think that that's the time to push harder. Um, you know, they've got a lot of homework. The ten-week season to them seems like a like an eternity, and they get tired towards the end of that. So once we get into the pro season, I'm more likely to have light practices and maybe give the kids a day off between ma between postseason matches and whatnot. the The results have proven to be to make it worthwhile. There's you know so when it comes to periodizing, I'll help you out. Send me an email, um, and then I hope that you'll be with me in the next clip. All right, so next clip, we're going to talk about what I call the four goals.